Welcome back, finally, to a new episode of Diamonds in the Rough. I haven't done one of these in months, I realize that. The last one I did was The Greatest Showman. And that one I just kind of did for fun. There wasn't really much of a tie-in. I didn't really have them from, of a plan for that episode, so I just kind of did whatever I felt like. This episode is a little odd, because this was supposed to come out a while ago, because this was supposed to be coming out around the same time as Black Widow. Because this is, of course, an MCU film. And I'm like, okay, new MCU film, the first one since uh, Far From Home back in 2019, so why not do one for the MCU? But then I just kept putting it off again. But now I feel like this would be the perfect time for this movie, because Shang-Chi has just released about a month ago, and this one ties way more into Shang-Chi than it did into Black Widow. Iron Man 3. And you can all tell exactly why, since the main villain of this film was the Mandarin. We'll get to that in a bit. This is... Many people... This consensus seems to be that this is... Whether they... Even if people like it, this seems to be on the lower totem pole for MCU films. And some people just outright don't like it. Some people think it's the worst of the MCU. And is it... This is worse than The Incredible Hulk. This is worse than Thor 2. This is worse than Captain Marvel. Really? Those films aren't terrible, but they're definitely more in the mediocre schlock range. Because the worst the MCU gets is boring and mediocre. That's the worst it gets. Unlike something like the DCEU, when the worst it gets is abominable. And the best DCEU gets most of the time is... Eh. But the best the MCU gets is just virtually perfect, really. They have films that I would actually call perfect. Perfect films are subjective. I don't think there will ever be such a thing as a perfect movie, but what you just consider perfect is gives you the perfect viewing experience, and many MCU films have given that to me. So the Avengers movies, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, Thor Ragnarok, Captain America Civil War, and Winter Soldier, the first Iron Man, um, see if there are any others. But yeah, that's, that's quite the list right off, the, that's quite the list right there. And, oh, Shang-Chi I would also throw in there now too. And, but not MC, every MCU film is made equal, even though I think all of them are watchable for me. I can watch all of them. Far From Home is kind of hard to watch, but I've been coming around a bit more on it recently. Mostly due to just idiots on the, the DCEU idiots on the internet. Like, okay, yeah, this MC, this is still an MCU film. Like, yeah, as a Marvel movie, it's pretty good. As a Spider-Man movie, it's terrible. But as a Marvel movie, just like Homecoming, just as a Marvel movie, it's fine. But now we get to the ones that are, like, in the middle for me, where you have ones like, what are some of the, the ones that are still really good, but are just kind of in the half and half for me, like the first Thor, the first Captain America, uh, Black Panther, I guess. That one's just kind of, eh. But Iron Man 3 is in that weird in-between. Because I really like Iron Man 3. I don't know why. I just do. I haven't seen it very many times, though. That's the one thing I will say. This is probably the MCU film I have watched the least outside of The Incredible Hulk. This is probably the MCU film I've watched the least. And that's because I was kind of half and half on it when it first came out, much like most people. But I've been coming around a bit more on it, because I've gone back and rewatched it a couple times, and I realized that this is actually really good. Now, what's the basic story for this? Yeah, I know people like to point out the stupid contrivances and stupid decisions made by the characters, but I will address that in a second. Tony Stark is suffering from PTSD due to the events of the Avengers. That's actually a very good idea for an for a for a movie that comes after the Avengers. That's a great idea, especially since he's the one who went into the wormhole and almost got blown up. That's a great idea, and it do, and it does a lot with that. And then a villain called the Mandarin appears, played by Ben Kingsley. I almost forgot the actor's name, and he destroys Tony's Malibu mansion and almost kills Tony. Now Tony is now. Basically stranded in the middle of nowhere. I don't remember where he is. Is he in, like, Tennessee or something? Or Texas? Florida? He's in some state that's not close to California or New York. 
I don't, I don't remember where he is, but, and he's out there and his suit is not working. The suit he has is not working, so he's basically outside the suit a lot of the movie. And I think that's something that that took people out of the movie, is that, okay, it's an Iron Man film, why, are, why is he in the Iron Man suit so little? But I actually really like that. I like that it focuses more on Tony Stark post-Avengers. It focuses on the human side of him. That's what Iron Man 1 did very well, and that's what Iron Man 2 kind of failed at. Iron Man 2 is weird because it, it like kind of delved into the character a bit more, but also kind of trashed it to the point where, because the arc reactor is using is slowly killing him, but he just up and creates a new element that fixes it. That's bullshit. And then you have the his alcoholic problems, but it's all, and th that's a great idea to focus on, and that's a real problem he has in the comics, but it's kind of played as a joke in that movie. And that's one of the reasons I think Iron Man 2 is way more down on the totem pole and why Iron Man 3 is up higher. They don't really focus on his alcoholism in this one because what, cause Shane Black knew, yeah, they kind of they kind of flubbed that in Iron Man 2, so let's just do something else. That's something else this movie does really well too, is that, or something that I like that it does, it does something different. Something that a lot of movie sequels struggled with back in the day and to be fair, even still kind of do today, they do the exact same thing. Think like Home Alone 2. What's going on? Oh, it's the exact same plot, just in New York. And there's even a bunch of crappy references to remind you, oh, hey, we're doing it again. Or Hangover 2. We did the exact same thing and made a bunch of references like, oh no, it's happening again. It's Those are the worst kind of movie sequels. This one does not fall into that trap. And I don't, Iron Man 2 didn't either. None of the MCU sequels really fall into that trap of it's doing the exact same thing again. And that's something that the MCU, that's why, that's another thing why I really like the MCU is that it always feels new. People have done a bunch of stuff about the Marvel formula. That's just a bunch of idiots complaining that there's nothing to complain about. That's really all they're doing. The Marvel formula is a bullshit is a bullshit complaint made by people who can't complain about the MCU and want to. It's just people that want to be loud and obnoxious. So, getting into Iron Man 3 a bit more, he meets this kid named Harley. Yeah, Harley. And played by a really good... The actor's actually pretty good. I like when they get good child actors for a movie. Same thing I liked in Night Books, is where they get good child actors in these roles. And they got a good one for Iron Man 3 as well. And I like do like that he showed up at as a cameo at the end of Avengers Infinity War during Tony's funeral. I really like that. And eventually he goes back and defeats the villain, Aldrich Killian, played by Guy Pierce. We'll get to him in a second. And with the help of his buddy War Machine, uh, James Rhodes, played by Don Cheadle. Is it even worth bringing up the casting change from the first Iron Man about Don Cheadle and uh, Terrence Howard? Is it? It's not worth it? Okay, it, yeah, it's not. So, especially since that, that change would have been more relevant if I was doing Iron Man 2, but I'm not. I'm doing Iron Man 3. So, we're just going to skip over that and get into the good aspects of this film. And there are a lot. First thing. I know I'm going to, I'm going to address the elephant in the room first. I know a lot of people really hated the Mandarin twist. I did not. But hear me out. I didn't hate the twist that Trevor Slattery wasn't the Mandarin, that the Mandarin was just a prop. I liked that. That was, that was an interesting idea. It was an interesting twist. What I didn't like is that the Mandarin was Aldrich Killian. Guy Pierce with drag, Asian dragon tattoos on him? Come on. I don't care if you wanted to make the character a white guy, but lose the tattoos. It looked ridiculous, and I... I I just didn't care. The, the, the character of Aldrich Killian, again, I wouldn't have minded if he was Mandarin, but he was just a lame villain. He really was. He was like Justin Hammer from the first one. Just kind of lame and just kind of there. But I did like the... I didn't mind the twist that Trevor Slattery wasn't the Mandarin. I do like, like how that comes up again in Shang-Chi. And the, the Mandarin was freaking awesome in that movie. So yeah, I'm gonna get... So that's out of the way. The second thing that I've seen people complain about is that he's out of the suit too much. I really like how he has to use his intelligence more in turn in these fight scenes. He doesn't just have to go up and just shoot everybody with his repulsor rays or his missiles or whatever else he has. 
he has to use his brain. And in a lot of the fight scenes, he's outmatched, but, he's, but he comes away victorious because he's much smarter than the villain. And that's something that I feel like has been was missing of Iron, in Iron Man 2. It was just a bunch of big, dumb firefights. Because there, there are scenes where he has to just go around with like a tranquilizer gun and fighting people that can breathe fire. It's really fun to watch. And probably my favorite scene in this movie is the scene, or I guess my second favorite, is the scene where he's in, where he's like captured and then he has to basically fight everybody with like one boot jet and one repulsor ray glove. And I really, I liked how he, I liked the wire work they did. I liked the... I like how he moved around. I like the the action scene. I like the choreography for it. And I do also like the, the one joke after he gets everybody. There's one guy with the gun. He's like, honestly, I hate working here. These guys are so weird. He just does that. And he runs away and starts just like, nope, knocks his ass out too. Or possibly kills them. The Avengers don't really have an issue with the killing. And that's something I do like about Marvel is that they don't have to have every character have a no-kill rule. And I feel like that's where DC kind of falls into a trap unless it's an anti-hero. Because every hero they have has a no killing rule, unless you're being, unless your film is being directed by Zack Snyder, in which case, die, motherfuckers. So, yeah, getting back on track, and then there's, and then there's of course the plane scene, which is, in my opinion, my favorite scene, probably one of my favorite scenes in the trilogy, actually, where he has to save all these, save like, what was it thirteen people falling out of a plane, and he does, and they do the barrel of monkeys thing. That was actually really funny, and it was a good scene. And then there's the suit jumping sequence at the end, which is freaking awesome. I think that might actually be my favorite scene in the trilogy. Maybe outside of the initial escape from the first movie, but other than that, it's my favorite scene. Because it's, it's just a great spectacle to watch. It's so much fun to see. I love the stunt work. I love all the... The CGI looks really good. This one does use a lot more CGI than the first two movies, but honestly, I didn't mind. Technology has evolved a lot in even just the past decade and a half, and they're going to make use of that technology, which makes sense that this is a movie about using technology to win your battles. And the, the initial, like, destruction of Malibu Mansion is a really awesome scene. It's a nice foreshadowing for rescue, with Pepper Potts briefly putting on the Iron Man armor. And the, there's also a lot of other characters in this movie that I feel... There, one problem I do have is that there's this one character, I don't remember her name. She, uh, fun fact, she was originally going to be played by Amelia Clark, but she had to drop out due to, I want to say, scheduling conflicts or something? I don't know. But it's this chick that shows up at his Malibu mansion. Is she like an assistant or something? I can't remember because she, her character is really forgettable, but of course she's working with Aldrich Killian. That's, the, that's apparent the second you see her. It is just, it is not a good twist. That's, that one's not a good twist. <laughs> and there's this one scene where, like, as the mansion's blowing up, they see a missile coming on the TV, and she's, like, so nonchalant. It's like, should we be worried about that? Yes, you should be worried about that. A missile is coming right at you. And so they're willing to blow up one of their own? Really? They're not going to have her, they're going to have her there while they blow it up? That seems like a really shitty tactic. But that that one I'm I'm kind of nitpicking there. But yeah, th I apologize. This video is being kind of short. How long has this been? Uh, it's been about thirteen minutes. About as long as my la about as long as my last one. Uh, I'm not finished yet. But this is gonna be. I can tell this is gonna be a much shorter one than a lot of my other diamonds in the rough because unlike ones like Percy Jackson where that one went thirty minutes, this isn't one where like so many people hate it for wrong reasons. Or people hate it for no good reason. I understand why people don't like this one. There are some Marvel... There are some movies... I just don't get why people hate... Why do so many people hate Tron Legacy? I will never understand why so many people hated that movie. But this one... I kinda get it. I kinda get it. It's the same thing with, like, the Venom movies. I get why people don't like them. This one I just find to be really good. I really like Iron Man 3. It's not among the greatest of the MCU. Like I said, the greatest of the MCU is basically downright perfect films. But it's definitely not on the lower totem pole. It's not just mediocre schlock. And I, I would say it's probably... What are there, 24 films in the MCU now? I'd say this is probably... This probably makes the 13th or 14th spot... Probably somewhere right behind the Ant-Man movies and Doctor Strange. 
And that's still really good. I really like the anime movies and I really like Doctor Strange. So I really liked this movie. I really liked Iron Man 3. Am I bummed there was a fourth one? There wasn't a fourth one? Not really. I feel like this was a good place to end the Iron Man solo films. Because he because he does work better when because like a lot of the team up movies that he's in are better than Iron Man 3, obviously. The Avengers movies are way better than this movie. I think the first Iron Man is probably better than the first two Avengers movies. Maybe that's a really high bar to clear though. So yeah, that's um that's Iron Man 3. I don't really Again, I don't have any like deep analysis of why this is a fantastic comic book film. But it, this is just another one that I personally enjoy. So, yeah, that's kind of it. But I feel like people are missing out by not giving this movie a second chance. People kind of wrote this movie off purely... Be, pure, a lot of people purely due to the Mandarin twist. And I feel like that's not fair. It's the same thing that happens with a lot of YA movies. They get written off because they're in the YA genre, and I feel like that's not fair. They deserve a, this movie deserves a second chance, and I, I, it'll definitely be warranted. So yeah, that's all I got for Iron Man three. Next time, we will be delving into the wonderful world of Disney. Though it's not so wonderful anymore, is it? But this movie is. So yeah, that's all I got for Iron Man three. I just. Give this movie another chance. Just one more chance is all it takes for Iron Man 3.